You don't have to go anywhere in Coweta County without um, meeting someone who knows someone, or probably yourself, who knows who will be introducing our speaker today. I'd like to ask Bob Coggin to come to the podium and introduce our speaker. Bob? Before I introduce our speaker, I want to put my city council hat on for a minute and tell you that our work on the Union Public Safety Complex and the new West Georgia complex with the old hospital is on target and under budget. So that's <laughs> those are going to be two great, uh, they're going to change the image of, of Newton for a lot of people. Uh, when I first started to think about introducing Gary today, I got a hold of the, his bio and uh, I was able to reduce the four pages down to one. <laughs> uh, I first met Gary in uh, 1998, when I was chair of the of the bowl, and we uh, we were recruiting, trying to recruit someone to fill the uh, slot that Robert Delt Morgan gave up when he moved to Houston, and Gary and I got to know each other real well because I spent a lot of time with him before we before we offered him the job. Before we hired him uh, it, uh, to run the, the back in those days the Chick Fil A Peach Bowl, uh, you know it's coming back to that. Gary will talk about it. Uh, he had spent about 36 years in, in the sports marketing business, and uh, if he had two hours up here today, he could tell you a lot, of, a lot of great stories. But Gary has done an incredible job running the, running the bowl for us, uh, and he has been recognized for that by, by people in the city of Atlanta. He is one of the most, he's in the category of the most, 100 most respected business people in Atlanta because of the way he's delivered on the bowl. Uh, in 1985, this was, the bowl was being run by the, by the Lions Club. And it was on the, on the brink of going out of business. And my former chairman, Ron Allen, was the president of the chamber that, that year. So he, he moved the, the bowl to the, to the chamber, which was a great thing. But about two years ago, just about two years ago, right? Uh, we, Gary had built such an incredible staff and we had such a great balance sheet. We were able to pay the chamber back some of the money that they had used to keep us running and the bowl is now operating as a totally independent unit, with, thanks to Gary. But in, during, his, during his tenure uh, as the, as the uh, CEO of the bowl, he's accomplished a, a lot. Uh, we, he, we've, we have, in the last 12 years, we've given over, over $15 million to charity including Winshape Homes, which uh, the Catholic family supports very much. Gary, Gary created uh, uh, Kickoff Classic, which is the two, the, some years one, some years two game, games we have at Labor Day weekend. Uh, uh, he helped create the Atlanta Sports Council. Uh, he's a very instrumental in bringing the College of Football Hall of Fame to Atlanta, which he, Gary did most of the work to make that happen. Uh, he's been extremely successful in almost everything he's done, and we've been honored to have him running that bowl. He's built a terrific team, great balance sheet, uh, and, we, and getting us in the playoff group, it's just probably his most uh, significant accomplishment. And without any further, Jerry. Good morning. How's everybody? Thank you to New Link. You know, I haven't been involved in sports for 36 years. As Bob mentioned, you can't do these things without sponsors. We call them partners. I don't like the word sponsors because you really develop a partnership and uh, uh, it, it works. We've, we've been able to do that with Chick-fil-A. Uh, how many people worked out this morning? That's more than I thought. I didn't work out, so I, I need to get a workout and I think you probably all need to get a workout. So. I'm an old coach, so let's push back from your chair and everybody stand up. We're going to get all the workouts. <laughs> so, now being an old coach, you got to coach people up. So, whenever you're getting ready to work out, you got to you got to pay attention, right? You got to be aggressive. You got to be passionate. All right. So, I want everybody to get ready to to work out. So. 
We ready? Now, you got to bend your knees a little bit, all right? Get a little bit loose, all right? We're going to wake everybody in Coweta County up, right? Every time my hands pass, I want a hard, sharp clap. Not a little of those claps. A hard, sharp clap, okay? Every time my hands cross. We ready? Ready. Thank you. <laughs> You gotta enjoy the journey. God doesn't promise you another second, another minute, another hour, another day. So you gotta enjoy the journey, as I always say. Um, let me first off thank Glenn Gold. We uh, worked together at the Chamber in Atlanta a long time ago, and it's uh, it's just really great to see him doing uh, wonderful things down here. I, I get, you know, I speak a lot and go around to Atlanta, and I'll tell you what, you guys have a neat community here. I get a good feel that it's close knit, people willing to work together, people willing to help each other, and that's that's not always the case. So thanks to your leadership and Bob and and Glenn and and uh, Candace and what they do here, you got a chance to be something special. And this facility is gorgeous. So I want to recognize Frank Holberg, who was our chairman of the Bowl back Peach Bowl when it was just the Peach Bowl, right? Back in the uh, 70s. So, uh, Frank, good to have you here. Thanks for your leadership. Um, what I want to do, they said talk about 15 minutes, and normally when I talk, a lot of people have questions, so I want to leave some time for questions at the, at the end. Um, God bless you. I uh, want to talk about three subjects today. One is about Atlanta, as Glenn said, being the uh, football capital of the world. Secondly, talk about our new college football playoff that we're entering into and thirdly, about the new stadium and the Hall of Fame, which are coming online uh, this year in the new Hall of Fame, and then in 17, the new stadium. Um, so let's talk about David Letterman, the 10 reasons why I believe Atlanta is the college football capital of the world. First off is you. We have the most passionate fans in the country. Uh, when you look at viewership of, of college football across the country, Atlanta is the biggest major market uh, that has been in the top five rankings every year over the last 10 years. You got some smaller markets like Columbus, Ohio, where Ohio State is, Birmingham, Alabama. I know there's some Alabama people in, in the house. <laughs> Roll Tide. Um, but uh, Atlanta is the biggest major market that's been ranked consistently in the top five every year for the last 10 years. So we've got tremendous fans. We've sold out 17 straight Chick-fil-A Peach Bowls. Uh, which is second only to the Rose Bowl in continuous sellout. So we appreciate your support. Hopefully you'll continue your support of us as we move into the college football playoff as well. So that's number one. Number two, little known fact recruiting wise, we are the number one recruiting base in the country per capita, which is amazing. Um, when you look at Texas and California and, and Florida, they're one, two, and three. We're number four overall but we're number one per capita in the country. So a lot of great players coming out of here. So number three, growth of the game. When you look at the expansion of college football, which is second only to the NFL in fan avidity uh, in the country, we've had Mercer, Reinhardt, Kennesaw, and Georgia State all begin programs, college programs, in the last five years. There's no other state that's having the growth of college programs in the country like, like George is. Um, number four, our success of teams. When you look at Georgia and Georgia Tech, the national championships they won. You can go a little south, Georgia Southern. They've won numerous national championships in, in the F, FCS uh, division. Um, so success of our teams, the national championships, the conference championships that we've had. And you know, I tell people, I'm from Pittsburgh, you know, up in Pittsburgh, you know, the Pirates and the Steelers and the Penguins, 
they've been around, you know, Steelers have been around for over 110 years. Well, here, the Falcons have only been here since 1966. So, but George and Georgia Tech have been here since, you know, uh, 19, 1892. So there's been generation after generation after generation of college football fans grow up here in the South, and that's why college football is so prominent versus what you see in the Northeast, where the pro teams are probably more prominent in the Northeast. So our tradition of our teams is number five. When you talk about the number of All-Americans, 21 All-Americans at Georgia Tech, um, 31 at Georgia, Heisman Trophy winners, uh, Bobby Dodd, one of the greatest coaches ever in the game from Georgia Tech. Um, uh, Georgia State's had two Walton Payton Award winners, which is the preeminent award. It's kind of the Heisman Trophy for uh, the FCS division. So we've got great traditions and generations of teams here in Atlanta. When you talk about corporate support, you cannot turn on a game on a Saturday without seeing the Home Depot CBS SEC Game of the Week, Home Depot Game Day on ESPN, Coke Zero, sponsorship of the Coke Zero section in Game Day, uh, AT&T, Chick-fil-A, obviously, as we know, with the bowl game, the kickoff game, and, and the Hall of Fame now, UPS, Napa, Auto Trader, Delta, Kia, all those companies are headquartered here in Atlanta. And they are the financial underpinning of college football. Uh, the reason college football is so successful on TV, it's because all that corporate support pays for all that advertising. So that's the number six reason. No other city has that kind of corporate support that pays for college football. Number seven, another little known fact, we are the number five ranked city in producing NFL players. The, out of all the cities in the country, we produce more NFL players than, than just about everybody uh, coming from our high schools and colleges. Uh, number eight, events. When you look at the Chick-fil-A kickoff game, which we'll have two this year, Ole Miss will play Boise on Thursday on ESPN, and then Saturday Alabama will play West Virginia at 3.30 on ABC. Um, when you look at that game, the HBCU game, historical black college game that we have every September, we have the SEC championship every year, which has arguably arguably become the semifinal game for the last seven or eight years in this country. Uh, and then obviously the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, uh, which we all know on December 31st. Uh, so nobody has that kind of cadre of events uh, in college football as, as Atlanta does. Number nine, now we're moving into the college football playoff. We'll be only one of six bowl games in the country. The Rose, the Orange, the Sugar, the Cotton, and the Fiesta. Uh, the Rose, the Sugar, the Cotton, uh, have all been around for 80 to 100 years. Uh, we're a bowl for 46 years. So we're the, we're the, young, the young one out of all those. But for us, it's kind of like uh, the little train that could. You know, here's the Peach Bowl that a lot of people, you know, didn't recognize. Here we are mentioned in the same sentence now with the rose, the sugar, the orange, and the cotton who have been around for 80 to 100 years. Uh, so we'll be, we'll be hosting top 15 ranked teams every year, and then every third year, we'll host number one against number four, or number two against number three, uh, every third year for the next six years. And then if we renew that, it'll be for another six years. So we're in for a great, uh, a great hosting of, of some unbelievable games here in Atlanta over at least the next six years. Um, as Bob mentioned, you know, we, we uh, believe that this community has supported this bowl game and grown this game to a point where we're able to enjoy an opportunity to be in the college football playoff. Uh, and so we give back to the community. Uh, last year we gave $1.6 million that could have gone to our profits and our reserves. We gave it back to this community. Why? Because this community has supported us, both corporately and fan-wise. You've sold out our games. Uh, corporately, uh, the corporations have supported our games through sponsorship and partnership. And so we feel it's impingent upon us to give back to those that gave to us. And, and that is by far more than any other bowl game in the country. i give you a frame of reference. Probably the closest bowl to us gives about $200,000 a year uh, away in charity. And, and we gave $1.6 million last year. And that was a record off of $1.5 million the year before. So we're committed to this community to give back in a myriad of ways. Um, so that's kind of the ninth reason. The tenth reason is the new College Football Hall of Fame, which I want to spend a little bit of time on. 
Um, you know, we, we had met on this going back to 2004 uh, when I flew to South Bend, Indiana, uh, where the, the College Football Hall of Fame was. It was uh, languishing there. Uh, they only had 60,000 people going. Uh, it was very not interactive at all, very stagnant. And so I looked at, you know, these nine reasons, and I basically put them down in a proposal uh, to the National Football Foundation in Dallas and said, look, here's all the reasons you should come to Atlanta. Now, if you agree with that, we want you to move to Atlanta and we'll build a, a new college football Hall of Fame for you. If you're going to bid it out like they did, like NASCAR did with the NASCAR Hall of Fame, we're not going to bid. Um, and they voted 39 to 1, uh, their board, to come here. And so, um, you know, we, we will open a new uh, $66 million, all in it's probably about $85 million uh, through the state uh, money that we got where the facility will basically interconnect with the Omni Hotel and the World Congress Center. So people will be able to come right off the convention floor, walk right into the Hall of Fame or stay in the Omni and move right into the Hall of Fame. Um, I termed the phrase edutainzium. Uh, which uh, is not in Wikipedia yet, but hopefully will be after the hall opens. Uh, but my inspiration on the hall was basically to create a, a facility that's going to be educational, entertaining, and then a museum. And so I used a piece of the words edutainzium. Um, a lot of us old people, I'm 59, you know, we like to read and we like to see helmets and cleats and footballs and things like that. But a lot of young kids, they want to touch things and they want to be interactive. So you're going to get two experiences when you come in. One is you walk in and there's 767 helmets on a wall. That's every school that plays college football, Division One, Two, II, and Three. When you sign in on the, on the iPad there, and, and I'm a North Carolina State grad, North Carolina State's helmet will light up when I sign in. You'll get an RFID um, uh, wristband. And so I'll get an experience that will be one, College Football Hall of Fame oriented when I go through, but also will be an NC State experience because that RFID will highlight what's relevant. Ted Brown, who played running back when I went to school, is in the Hall of Fame. So, you know, something with Ted Brown will come up. Um, the other thing you'll see is uh, it's going to be very interactive where we went to see probably at least 10 museums. And, you know, I went to Nashville. I don't know if you've been to Nashville, the Country Music Hall of Fame. When you're in Nashville, go. It's well worth it. Um, but their Hall of Fame is a lot of wood, very reverent, and uh, they, have, they have pictures of the Hall of Fame people in country music, Johnny Cash, et cetera, et cetera. I almost felt like I wanted to get on my knees. I'm Christian and Catholic. <laughs> and I wanted to bless myself, very, very reverent. And that's what they wanted. Um, but with college football, it's exciting, it's, it's thrilling, it's heart pounding, et cetera. So what I said, instead of having like Canton, Ohio, where you have busts of the Hall of Famers from the NFL, which are very inanimate objects, I wanted interactivity. And so you'll walk into the Hall of Fame on the top floor, and it'll be a six-foot football card that'll be interactive. So when you push Herschel Walker, Herschel Walker will come up, you'll see his five best plays, you'll push this button, you'll see his records come up, you'll push this button, it'll have all the other running backs in the Hall of Fame. So very interactive experience rather than just seeing a bust of Herschel Walker and walking by. Um, so that'll give you an understanding of truly what you're gonna see there. It's gonna be unbelievable. We did a throughput analysis. About 500,000 people are projected to go through there. I think the first year it'll be a million. Um, and, and I think that 500,000 number will, you know, that's how we built the business model. We were very conservative. Uh, so we'll, we'll remain fiscally responsible. Um, but I think, you know, it's just going to be phenomenal what, uh, what that Hall of Fame will do to the, the whole Centennial Olympic Park area now with the aquarium, the World of Coke, and the new Civil and Human Rights Center that we'll have. It really gives Atlanta a tourist uh, attraction downtown for all the convention people that we have coming into town. So the Hall of Fame is going to be uh, phenomenal. We'll do the uh, opening in this August, uh, and then we'll have the enshrinement in October uh, for the first class to go into the new college football Hall of Fame. So uh, please, when you get the opportunity, people come to town, you know, we always say, what are you going to do? 
I remember living here and moving here in 1980, and the biggest thing we could do back in 1980 was go to Stone Mountain, right? I mean, that's what everybody, people come to town, you take them to Stone Mountain. Well, now, to have the opportunity to go to the new College Football Hall of Fame and while they're down there, the Aquarium and the World of Coke and the Civil and Human Rights Center, it's, it's really a phenomenal opportunity for, for downtown. Um, the last thing I want to finish with, uh, and, and this is not in my top ten, but because uh, it's not online yet, but it will, will be coming, is the new stadium, which will be uh, within 80 yards um, of the existing Georgia Dome. So where the Georgia Dome is, right outside of it is the orange parking lot there. That's where the new uh, stadium will be. And then the, the Georgia Dome will be knocked down in 2017. So they'll build right up to the Georgia Dome, then knock it down, and then the Georgia Dome will become parking for the new stadium. The new stadium, if I don't know if you've been to Dallas and seen Jerry Jones Stadium, but you've probably seen it on TV. Uh, it's about a 60-foot board uh, that goes from the 20-yard line to the 20-yard line. And a lot of people, when they go to Jerry Jones Stadium, they don't watch the game on the field. They watch it on this big board. It's, it's, it's huge. It's incredible. You can imagine from the 20-yard line to the 20-yard line. Uh, well, if you can picture, uh, our stadium is going to have – not only that big, a little bit, little bit bigger, probably 70 feet, but it's going to go the whole way around the stadium. So as you're, you're sitting on the, on the sideline or in the upper level, and a guy runs a 100-yard uh, touchdown kickoff back, you'll be able to watch it on the big screen, him go all 100 yards, and, and it'll be 360 degrees around. It'll be a retractable roof. Um, you know, I was out at the Falcon Complex last week. It's just, it's 1.2 billion. It'll probably go higher than that, but it's it's phenomenal. Uh, Arthur Millions, Arthur Blank's putting in 800 million of his own money. Uh, the mayor has approved 200 million from the hotel motel tax for us bringing in events like this. I mean, Atlanta uh, just through the Chick Fil A Peach Bowl and our kickoff games uh, this year will will provide over 100 million dollars of economic impact. Uh, to Atlanta uh, through our, just our three games because uh, we have so many people coming in from out of town. Uh, and then they've got $200 million from the NFL uh, fund uh, to make up the $1.2 billion. But it's truly going to be remarkable. About 72,000 seats, about the same as the Georgia Dome. Uh, and they'll build in some extra seats for us for the SEC championship or the college football playoff games or Super Bowl, um, which we hope that the Super Bowl will know next May God bless you. We'll know next May whether we win the Super Bowl for 2019. Uh, we are going to bid next April for uh, hosting the 2018 National Championship game. Uh, and then we're hoping that the Final Four will come in 2020. So it could be a heck of a run for us in Atlanta here to go National Championship game in 18, 19, uh, have the Super Bowl, 20, have the National Semifinal game, and then a Final Four uh, all in the new stadium. So uh, it's an exciting time with the new College Football Hall of Fame opening this August and then in 2017 in the springtime, the new stadium. Uh, and then we got the Brave Stadium, which uh, will, will be up in 2017 as well. So, um, so those are some of the things going on um, in Atlanta. Uh, the reason I believe that we're the, the college football capital of the world are those kind of David Letterman top ten reasons. Um, and I know that questions are normally – uh, important. I don't know, Glenn, do, I, do we have time for questions okay? I, do, I didn't want to speak too long because I know there's always questions about something going on in sports. Uh, that, so if I can answer anybody. Yes, sir. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I mean, the Georgia Dome is, to me, the best indoor facility in the country for college football. When you put two college teams in there, as we've had, and sell out opportunities with either the SEC championship or our kickoff games or our, our Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, there's no finer facility. And I hear that from players and coaches and administrators, et cetera. Uh, and, you know, Arthur Blank probably put – between him and the state, about 50 million in it, about 
five years ago with all new suites, new seats, uh, they widened the concourses, et cetera. So, you know, unfortunately in America, you know, we're, we're not like Europe where, you know, they, they have Wembley Stadium, you know, that's there years and years and years. About 20 years, 25 years, and we want to knock something down and build something new. Um, so, you know, Arthur wanted, uh, I believe, an outdoor stadium, and that's how it started. You know, he wanted to build an outdoor stadium. Uh, the Georgia Dome, wanted, or the state wanted to keep the Georgia Dome. Um, and so what they basically did is compromise and said, okay, if you'll put money in to have a retractable roof stadium, you know, that we can keep covered for SEC Championship, Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, Final Fours, because there's a lot of events, you need a roof over it rather than having an open facility. Uh, and so Arthur uh, and the state both acquiesced and came up with a, a plan for Arthur to put $800 million of his own money in and, and build this $1.2 billion facility. Um, so it will be state of the art. Uh, it will get us a Final Four, a national championship game. I'm not sure that the Georgia Dome would have in the future as, as you know, you got a new uh, place in Minnesota, a new place in San Francisco. Miami's going through a $400 million a change as well. So I think we're, we're staying ahead of the, the, the curve, so to speak. But I agree with you, Georgia Dome's a great facility. Other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, no, it's a good question. There was some talk that the conferences, the bigger conferences, the ACC, the SEC, the Big Ten, the Big 12, and the Pac-12, uh, about 65 schools, they were talking about potentially moving away from the NCAA. Uh, they were bluffing a little bit, but th their problem was they couldn't pass legislation that they wanted to pass because the NCAA has so many smaller schools that um, you know have an equal vote. So uh, let's let's say there's a thousand schools out there, and there's a thousand votes. You got 65 votes versus whatever the math is, 935, right? And so they wanted to pass legislation where they could give a full cost of scholarship to student athletes, Men, men's basketball to women's soccer, right? And so a lot of them. A lot of those 935 schools couldn't afford that. So they would vote that legislation down. So those 65 schools got frustrated and said, we need some autonomy. We've got to be able to pass some legislation that's good for our programs because we have the money to do so and pass along to student athletes. And so what they said is we're going to move out of the NCAA. Now they thought better of it because all their other sports, the, the Olympic sports as they call them, uh, men's baseball, they all need the NCAA because the NCAA puts on all the national championships of all those sports. They, they put on all the compliance for, uh, you know, all those sports as well as basketball and football. And so they figured the best way to do it is if they can get autonomy under the tent of the NCAA, that that would be the best means of accomplishing what's good for everybody. So I think this August you'll see a vote where those 65 schools, those five conferences will get that autonomy to pass some legislation that they want to pass. But they'll all stay under the NCAA. Other questions? Peter, I got here. Yes, sir. What, what would you say was the most exciting game you've had in the Peach Bowl? Oh, wow. Um, you know, we've had so many. I mean, you, I know Tom Moore's out there, you know, say Clemson LSU. Uh, in 2012, Clemson, you know, drives down the field and uh, with one second left on the clock, kicks a 30-yard field goal to beat LSU. Uh, both. <laughs> Maybe that question should be addressed to the crowd here and ask them their favorite. Um, yeah, there's there's so many. We've had so many close games. I think our average margin of victory was six points over the last uh, 40 years. So uh, we've been blessed to have the ACC and the SEC. I, I should take a second, too. I, I didn't do it in the beginning, but, you know, when, when Bob originally uh, with the committee hired me in 1998, Bob and Albert Tarika had done so much to reorganize the bowl uh, and set the bowl on, on the kind of 
baseline and foundation that I was able to come in with my team to just build on it. Um, so Bob, Bob really deserves a lot of credit for, you know, his history and his experience at Delta in reorganizing the bowl and, and putting the committees in place that allows us just to, as the staff, to springboard off of that and, and really, you know, go on this 17-year run of sellouts and get to the college football playoff and be able to do the things <coughs> we're able to do. Uh, so we're, we're blessed to have Bob's leadership. I know you have felt it down here as well through the city council and through the, the chamber as well to have, you know, leaders like Bob Coggin uh, uh, put their imprint on, on the community. So. Um, Prediction for the final four? Let's look at the final four. That'll be good. Uh, we don't even have to throw it to you. I know, but with social media, I'm just afraid social media <laughs> will get the better of me because I know he's really good with social media. He's one of the young guys back there. Um, I think it'll be very competitive. <laughs> and I'm not a politician, but. That's as politically correct as I can get. Um, any other questions? I don't want to hold you up this morning. Yes, sir. Oh, go ahead, ma'am. How many jobs will the Hall of Fame create? Yeah, the Hall of Fame will have 25 people working full time, staff, staff wise there. And uh, I can't. Yeah, I was going to say I can't remember the total economic impact, but it's it's in the millions and millions and millions of dollars that uh, it'll bring to the. To the community. It's going to be unbelievable. Just real quick, when will it open? Uh, August uh, of this year, probably that week of August 24th, uh, it'll actually open. So it's been a long, long road. And, you know, John Stevenson, who I was the original CEO and started the Atlanta Hall Management, John's come in after me as I focused on the bowl. And John's done a great job with a lot of great people in this community. Sir, you had a question, I know. Yeah, the business model is such that, you know, I like to say there's, you got to maximize the three T's. You know, we're all in business. I mean, we're a $30 million business, um, you know, and uh, we have to maximize, in our case, the three T's, which are title sponsor, TV revenues, and tickets. And one of those is the title sponsor, which is uh, Chick-fil-A. In our case, for the last 17 years, they've paid us a fee. And for that, they got advertising and tickets and activation and fan fest and all kind of things. Uh, in the new model, as we move forward in the new college football playoff, ESPN paid the CFP, the college football playoff group, which is comprised of uh, 11 conferences in Notre Dame. That makes up CFP, college football playoff. They took the rights to the six bowl games that I mentioned earlier, the rose, the sugar, the orange, the cotton, the fiesta, and the peach. They took our title sponsor rights and our TV rights that we had to give up to them to be a part of the new college football playoff. They took those and they sold those to ESPN for $6 billion over a 12-year term. So now ESPN has to make their money back, right, because they're not going to do it for charity. So what they did is, uh, and they've got a different business model, 65% of ESPN's business comes through uh, subscriber base. Unlike the networks, ABC, NBC, Fox, et cetera, all their revenues have to come through advertising. ESPN, because their cable, can charge subscriber fees. We all pay about $5 a month to ESPN for their programming. Um, and so 35%, the other, to get to 100%, comes from advertising. So what ESPN did is turned around and took the rights of those six bowl games and sold those to title sponsors for about $25 million. And so Chick-fil-A paid you know, somewhere $25 million for an advertising schedule all football season long and to advertise in each of the six bowl games and to be the title sponsor of the Peach Bowl. So that's how the business model works. So Chick-fil-A obviously is getting, you know, now that they're more national brand, they're looking for more national uh, uh, advertising opportunities, and that's what they did to, uh, in buying their sponsorship through ESPN. That scenario sounds like the Peach Bowl walked away. 
you know, it's interesting. It's, it's a different business model. I was telling a few people prior to this, you know, we used to, we used to run the title sponsor through us, the TV through us, the tickets through us, and, and that would be our revenue. And then obviously you take your expenses of overhead salary and what you put on the game. Um, and whatever you netted, you netted profit-wise. Now the business model is ESPN controls two of the top revenue streams, TV rights and the, and the title sponsor. We control the tickets. So it's impinged upon us to sell out the game because we have to pay our expenses. And then after expenses are paid, we get a management fee, a guaranteed management fee. And then we split 85 to the college football playoff group and 15% to us. It's a little different business model. So we've got to make sure we sell out. If we don't sell out, then we have a, a risk that we may not maximize our management fee. But we felt it was important for the city of Atlanta to be in the playoff to host semifinal games, you know, every three years. And so we were willing to take on that risk. But you're right, it, it's different business. Yes, sir. Glenn, questions. you just come grab last, me. Last one. Last one, okay. Uh, I guess two questions. Uh, is he allowed two questions? Sure, of course. Okay. <laughs> Dennis is allowed anything he wants. All right, Dennis. <laughs> Shoot. Uh, in the old model, uh, which program did you always uh, know that they could bring more people than anybody else? And secondly, when you, you guys are asking the tough political questions here. <laughs> when you move to the model of, say, Boise playing USC versus Tennessee playing LSU, Will the economic impact to the city change at all? Will they, will they travel more or less than our local? Yeah, there, I think your, your point's well taken. There's a little bit of risk in, you know, not having the ACC versus the SEC. We felt that was one of the reasons we were successful. Um, you know, I, I think with uh, moving into the playoff being one of the top bowls in the country, that I think the teams that we'll get will be having really good seasons, and so their fans will follow them. I think our new stadium will help. I think the Hall of Fame will help for people to want to come here. Uh, so we, we believe that even if we get a Boise State, you know, or, or one of those teams that aren't, you know, the, the big five conferences, that they'll, to get in to play in our game, they're going to have to be 10 and 2, 11 and 1, 12 and 0. So their fans will feel like Cinderella. This is their chance to dance. And so they'll follow them. Uh, the good thing that we have in Atlanta is um, the old sports council coming at me. You know, thanks to Delta Airlines, you know, 83% of the country can be here on a two-hour direct nonstop flight. We have hourlies to D.C., Boston, Chicago, um, you know, a lot of direct flights. So it's easy to get here flight-wise. We have three interstates that intersect in the middle of downtown. So it's easy for people to drive here as well. So, And during that time of the year, you can get a room for $69. You know, in Miami, um, you know, at the Rose Bowl, it's a little tougher. Um, so we feel like, you know, we, we've got all the, the uh, infrastructure, for lack of a better term, uh, built in why people will come here. Um, to your first question, I will answer this th this way. Um, Clemson has been here eight times more than anybody else. NC State seven times. Um, and, you know, then it goes down Auburn, Georgia, uh, like that, um, LSU. Uh, I always felt when we selected teams, which that's another change, we're not going to be selecting teams now. This new 13-panel uh, board that's Condoleezza Rice and Archie Manning and people like that, they'll be selecting the teams that will play in our games. But when we selected, we always felt like having the ACC, SEC, we couldn't go wrong. Uh, because people could drive here rather easy. We have the number one or two alumni bases of all the ACC and SEC schools living in Metro Atlanta. So there's a lot of people living here as well. So a little bit of risk that we don't have ACC, SEC. But if we stayed in the old system, we weren't going to have the high picks that we had in the ACC and the SEC either. So you, you may get teams that are 6-6, six and 7-5. Six, and five, And typically they don't support their, their teams as well as, you know, when they're ranked high. So, hey, thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it.